Next, we will take a look at the viscous forces on the infinitesimal fluid particle. So if I draw the particle here, and we're looking in the limit as dimensions of the particle tend to zero, on each of these planes, there is a normal viscous force, and there is a tangential force. It's called a shear. It's like a friction. And this normal force is in addition to the pressure. These viscous forces uh, are present only when there's fluid motion, unlike the pressure, which is, all, which is present even when there is no fluid motion. First, let's take a look at the, the shear force, OK? And I've written it, so I've drawn the shear here. And I, you usually draw it in this direction. So this is the positive shear. If um, the normal to the plane is pointing in the positive uh, coordinate direction, in this case, the normal is pointing in the positive um, x direction, then the direction of the shear, if the shear is in the in the positive y direction, then that's considered to be a positive. Because now you have to worry both about the plane on which the force is acting as well as the direction. Okay? And the plane is given by the the normal. So the normal is in the x direction here, normal to the plane. And that's why you denote this as tau xy, and correspondingly this will be tau yx. And if you do rotational equilibrium, you can show that uh, tau xy is equal to tau yx. So you know you can replace both of these and, and just call it tau xy for the shear. And then to look at the net shear force in the x direction, you do the same business. So let's say it's tau xy. And this is, you know, since a normal is pointing in the negative y direction, then the, um, the direction of the positive shear is in the negative um, x direction. And then there's a shear over here, which is in the other direction. It's slightly different. It's the same business again. And it's different by the gradient in the y direction times this distance here. And so the net shear force in the x direction is going to be that times the area of that Phase, which is this distance, delta x times 1, perpendicular to the plane. This is the volume. So this, uh, the gradient of the shear in the y direction gives us the net um, shear force per in the x direction per unit volume. Similarly, you can uh, look at the net um, shear um, force, or rather the net force due to the, the normal component, which I'll denote as tau xx, um, because now the plane is in, you know, the normal to the plane is in the x direction, and also the force is in the x direction. And you can do a similar business and work out that the, the net normal viscous force is, uh, is per unit volume is given by the gradient of this in the x direction. And I can put it together and get the net viscous force in the x direction per unit volume. So that's the contribution from the normal force, and that's the contribution from the shear force. And this one we saw over here, and this is a corresponding term. So that gives us the net viscous force. And to close the equation, uh, we have to um, relate the, the viscous forces to the gradients of the velocity. Let's do that next.